He lost to a Trump-backed candidate in May during that North Carolina Senate primary. He joins me now. And, and, and Governor McCrory, you've not been shy uh, about your views here, about what's happening to the party. There's a lot of hand-wringing today here in Washington. You're probably, your phone's probably been buzzing about what the heck is going on? Georgia, Pennsylvania. People are looking at Arizona going, what's happening there? It's like, it looks like Nevada's about the only place that Senate Republicans are truly behind a candidate that they think they can win. Have the establishment been too quiet? Are they too afraid of Donald Trump? Well, I think there's several factors that haven't been mentioned. One is you got to remember in North Carolina and Pennsylvania, Ohio, and now you're seeing Arizona and Missouri, there's, these are some tough, hardball primaries. And even after the victor comes across the line, primarily because of Trump's support and a lot of money, there's some hard feelings. And some of that support is not being transferred to the general election from even the Republicans. And then you have the independent voter status. For example, in my state, uh, the majority of voters in North Carolina now are independent voters. 35% of the voters are independent. And so they're sitting on the sideline watching this in purple states. In fact, Ohio, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Georgia, Arizona are all purple states. They go back and forth in presidential elections and in Senate elections. And you've got that dynamic. So the Democrats didn't have those tough primaries. The Republicans right. are in the defensive seats. Another factor very quickly is you have in Pennsylvania, you're retiring um, Pat Toomey, a more moderate type of uh, senator who wasn't attached to Trump. In North Carolina, you're replacing Richard Burr, yeah. a, a person who voted for impeachment, but got a lot of independent votes six years ago. You've got um, in, in uh, Ohio, Portman. Right. So those dynamics are still occurring, and there's still some raw feelings from the primaries, well, right. and I'm going to you're, you're going to have that hurry in Arizona, too. You're speaking in the third person, but it sounds like you still have some raw feelings about your primary. Oh, yeah. I mean, in all, has Ted Budd reached out to you? No, no. Are I've you had kidding other me? people reach out to me. No. The candidate himself, it's been three months, almost three months now. No. But that's, um, that's the difficulty in these races right now. Uh, there's still some scabs and some wounds from the primary, which the Democrats aren't having to deal with. But the Democrats are having their own issues. As you know, they're, they're avoiding Biden at all costs. No, well, they, uh, but North that gets Carolina. back. But you, you actually, this is why I wanted to talk to you about this. Yeah. Look, Mitch McConnell was aware of this problem when this cycle began. You know, yeah. he, you know, the opposition research book on Herschel Walker was made essentially public. They were begging yeah. the Donald Trump to back off of him. Um, you certainly were not discouraged from running by many people in, in the traditional wing of the Republican Party. But once they got candidates, they didn't fight for them. That's what I've noticed. And it yeah. seems as if that's is that why a Doug Ducey's not even running for the Senate? Yes, I think it is. I had talked to Ducey early on in the process when I was 30 points up. <laughs> and I said, it doesn't make any difference. We can win this if you're a former or current governor. But the dynamics changed. And I think the dynamics six to eight months ago was the economy's turning bad. Biden's numbers mm -hmm. are so bad. Um, no matter who's nominated in the state, we're going to win, even in purple states. And we got some celebrity types of people in Ohio and mm -hmm. Pennsylvania. We got a person with a lot of money and Bud in the Club for Growth. Georgia, you got a football star. It played great in the primary. The dilemma is in the general election with the independents. And that's what's going to determine these elections in the Senate majority, just like presidential elections. It, they're all going to be very close races. The Republicans, I think, will become get closer in both Pennsylvania and right. definitely in Ohio well, and of course. Uh, Arizona. But there's still going to be some wounds in Arizona since it's such a late primary. You know, you brought up, I, I thought you made an interesting observation there about Portman, Burr, Toomey versus Oz, Vance, and, and Bud here. You, you know, it's interesting. Roy Blunt, Roy Blunt in Missouri. And we also have Roy Blunt in Missouri. You know, I, I also bring up the abortion issue. You know, all of you are pro-life, but, but some of you are for sort of what would be seen as mainstream exceptions. And then some of these candidates that have gotten nominated are not necessarily for that. And it seems like that's creating more of a problem with independent voters. Do you get that sense? 
Well, I think part of the issue with the social issues, first of all, I've always realized there's no winning in social issues on both sides. Right. And uh, there's just surviving, because, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's political science, regardless of where you stand on those issues. But the, the issues um, really go back to the state legislature and the Senate candidates don't have much control of the state legislature, whether you're in a liberal state or a conservative state. And then you've got you know unique situations where you might have a Democratic governor, Republican legislature, vice versa. So there's a lot of division within these states that uh, I frankly think most of the senators are attempting to avoid at all right. costs. In fact, where a lot of the Republicans are playing the Biden game right now and hiding. Right. Um, Look, it's hard to find Ted Budd. Let me ask you this. Let me let me leave you. Let me let, let me get you out with this question. What would it take for you to get behind Ted Budd's candidacy? I'd like to talk to him. I, I don't know him. <laughs> I, I've probably said a total of 15, 20 words because he used a very effective tool in our primary was, was to get the Trump endorsement, get club for growth and avoid all debates. Um, so he used a technique that some Democrats were very successful in in the past. Herschel Walker right. looks like maybe doing the same thing. And you see the Democrats also not really out there. Uh, in fact, I'm seeing retail politics dying. Uh, people are relying on commercials Social or coordinated media. very yeah. few press conferences anymore compared to 10 to 15 years ago. Well, that you're right on. Uh, and as a just an old fashioned on the stump political reporter, I miss that. And I miss that a lot. And I know you and do Obama too. Obama and uh, yeah. Trump took retail politics to another level. And ever since then, no one can reach that level. So you're going, what the heck? Yeah, I'm going to rely you, on. You may be right. Uh, Pat McCrory, the former governor of North Carolina, uh, one thing about you is you don't, uh, you're not shy uh, and you tell us what you think and I appreciate it. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.